What's up, StarCraft fans? Today we're doing the tier list for what we do in the Shadows on Hammerland. Brian, let's hear the mutation. Void Thrashing is the map where we have to destroy 10 Void Thrashers before they destroy Sergeant Hammer's completely useless fortress. Each set we destroy reveals the next, unless we take too long and they spawn anyway. All enemy units are cloaked. Your guys have shorter vision range. And Fog of War is disabled. Areas without vision are in complete darkness. Cool. We have 2-2 two, two and Sticks better in the Culver today. How are you guys? Great. Great, yeah. All right. That makes all three of us. Well, all right, two of us. Uh, 2-2, two, two, how will we rank commanders this week? So, uh, commanders who can... I guess they they have like units that can tank for a little bit longer, like have more HP. That kind of helps because short sighted means that you're gonna be you're gonna get hit a lot more before you get in range. Darkness isn't really an issue because if you know the wave patterns, you know where they're gonna come from. And there are only two patterns on this map. Yes. Um, we move unseen is probably the biggest one. So you need well, actually, short sighted is the biggest one. We move unseen means you have to rush detection in case a wave comes at three minutes. But most commanders should have at least a spine or a tur a spore or a turret by then. All right. How about you, Stixpender? Uh, uh, yeah. So short sighted is the biggest one. We move unseen is a big problem. Remember, your detection can end up your detection radius isn't reduced by short sighted. So if you have a detector and then units for the forward gaming vision you'll still have detection but that said short-sighted just generally increases your ability to just lose important units so you still could lose the detector like that so that sucks some people can get around short-sighted because there are just some commanders who can do that and they're going to do really well cool let's begin abather where do we have him abather um unless you have like you're really familiar with the map luring in the beginning is going to be kind of hard because you don't see them so you kind of have to like watch the, the see blur. the blurs yeah and then like detonate your nest if you don't if you do uh like just let them walk over nest that's also fine but it's probably not as effective that's and your your spores gonna get hit before like you can see them yeah uh they don't have long range at least that's good that's really but good. yeah um uh, once you get a few brutalists things should be good but uh also um the overseers tend to get themselves killed because they gotta get closer, and so uh, you you probably want like a lot of extra ones, like five or six of them, just to make sure that you always have detection. I put them in B. Okay. How about you, Sixbender? Yeah. Uh, B for Avatar. That's fine, honestly. Uh, yeah. I feel like short sighted is going to make it really painful to do early farming, to be honest. But yeah, just B. All right. Let's put them in B. When... Any prestige works here, right? Yes. Even the third one. This <laughs> is B. Anyway, let's move on. Alalak, where do we have them? So you have you have the ability to use LRX hero units still pretty well despite the mutators because even if he can't see his enemies, he can still angrily wave his arms at them. Yes. You also have detection on the gateway, yes. which is really early, so that's nice. Pretty nice. Uh, and Ascendants also don't need to see their enemies to hurt them. So basically, just Elarak is just comes down to a whole lot of, I can't see you, I will still vaporize you. So, yeah, probably A, to be honest. You have important unit that you have to keep alive, okay. but as long as you have, you know, uh, Elarak is Elarak is even a melee unit, so he'll be up close anyway, so you don't have to worry as much about short-sighted, and Elarak can, can wave his arms into the darkness, Ascendants can orb into the darkness, and everything dies, even without you necessarily seeing it. You just fire into the darkness and hear a whole bunch of death sound effects in the void. <laughs> ah! uh, okay, how about you, Tutu? Um, I didn't even bother with Ascendants. I just made Destroyer fleet and just charged in. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I put him in A. He, he's, he can do a lot without having vision. Okay. Maybe someone can try no detector run. <laughs> I put him in I put him in A because I didn't have him in S. There we go. <laughs> Arcturus, where do we have him? Um ESO's in the middle, S. How about you, Six Bender? Yep. Alright, there <laughs> yep. we go. I ESO's had him in S. The mission. I had him in S because I didn't have him in A. Let's move on. Artan, that's where do we have him? I mean you have melee units. And your stuff is tanky, it's like meant to actually trade blows, so it's not as devastated by short sighted as some people because, you know, some people are just expecting to never have to trade blows, whereas Artanis doesn't have that luxury normally. But you still have to actually rush out detection, even if your detection is really good once you actually get a robo. And Dragoons and Tempests are what you'd normally go on this map, and both of those kind of rely on range, so meh. 
probably B, could be A, because shield overcharge and Archon dudes will make it relatively a non-issue. Okay, how about you, Tutu? Whenever I face short-sighted, I... Actually, was it short sighted or we move and see? Uh, one both. of those. <laughs> last or last time I think that was on now warfare. Also had both. I think yeah. P zero is actually better just because like losing observers. Like with P three, you're gonna lose observers a lot, uh, unless like you go in with shield overcharge every time. But you can't guarantee that. So uh, I use P zero tempest and it was okay. But uh, and at home you just mass uh, zealots plus cannons and spin lot the enemy attack waves. I put him in B. Okay. Let's put him in B. I had him in A. <laughs> because I didn't have anyone B or lower. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think I, I think that, like, basically, the observer problem is a thing. Technically, do remember you can siege an observer behind your army. Yes. And it has the detection radius. So I will note that for, you know, people who are deciding to try Artanis anyways. But, yeah, it's, it's something you have to manually do. All right, Dahaka. Where do we have him? Dahaka. Oh. Um, Dahaka. It's not afraid of the dark, so like pack leaders don't turn on the lights or anything. But you can just do the creeper host throw creepers at everything, or you can just make mutilists and fly with your extra life. It probably doesn't matter. The beginning is kind of rough because you don't have detection, but you just get one. Oh. Uh, you just get Glevix then, and then make Primal Worm, and then get uh you can summon a greater primal worm and glevic at the same time and kill since the enemies aren't stronger you can just destroy all of them i put him in a all right how about you Spender? um yeah a should be fine you just smash pack leaders into things and even if they can't see they're too tanky to die anyways especially if you have p2 so all right i put him in a because it didn't put him in s so there we go <laughs> phoenix where do we have I, I think your i think your tier list is too high up because like i i will like it's a real plus I, one this mutation enemies is are stronger. Not that easy. Short sighted is a pain. That's true though. Oh no, Han Cole was not. Anyway, uh, Phoenix, where do we have him? Phoenix already uses melee units, anyways. Uh, Keldellus doesn't need to see that well to just be able to run in and slap stuff as long as he has detection. So that can kind of work, but you're gonna have trouble keeping detectors alive unless it's the Arbiter suit. And the Arbiter suit, well, I mean, if it's just taking all of the aggro, that's not gonna be healthy for it. So that's not great. Um, I'm not actually sure which approach I'd use, whether I'd use the try to keep detection alive while I send champions in or try to keep an army functioning despite the mutators. But either way, I feel like it's gonna be pretty complicated. So he's B at best. Okay, how about you, Tutu? Oh, I uh, I did Phoenix Caldalis only. <laughs> And he just cleaves everything. But of course, the enemy has to be ground. So if you add the other champions with your army, I don't think it's going to be that bad. I put him in A just yeah. because, like, yeah, you're just going to run around killing stuff. See, totally and if that. you have all six champions instead of just Caldalis, you'll do a lot better. Not sure about all six, but yes. Well, at least, like, three of them. But anyway. I, honestly, I, I kind of have settled on with P2. I feel like Keldalus plus Talus and nobody else really just feels like the best option for pushing in. Anything else, and you're just adding so much expense and lack of expendability to your champions that you're actually that. hurting yourself with P2 style. I didn't find that also. In my I had him in A because I didn't have an S, so... Uh, are you okay with A, Stixbender? I guess, uh, basically, it's kind of just a matter of he's A, assuming keeping the Arbiter suit is actually that e alive is actually that easy. And if it is, then, okay, sure, A. All right. Keep your Arbiter suit alive. If you lose the Arbiter suit, everything will be bad until it respawns. True. Uh, Hot and Horner, where do we have them? Hot and Horner. Um, so they have to... The P2 detection is okay. But it's kind of slow. P2 starts kind of slow. Um, I guess if you don't need all 10 strike fighters first. Um, you can just kill the first one with um, Space Station. Call the, call and, space Station. Yeah. And then Call the Fleet gets buffed because if you can't see you the can enemies, see it won't shoot. It'll, the just, thrashers. it'll just shoot the Thrashers. <laughs> um, but with that said, uh, I put them in B. All right. How about you, Six Bender? Oh, wait. The Thrashers are no longer cloaked. That's right. They're not. They used to be affected by by the cloak. That's why I thought that Phoenix would have trouble, because if Caldalus can't see the Thrasher, you're going to have a problem. Oh, he can. Don't worry. Oh, so if he can, then... Yeah, that explains why Phoenix was so easy. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Basically, Hunter Horner... Yeah, Call of the Fleet is buff because the Thrasher is, in fact, visible. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can see them being pretty decent with top bar spam. Um, All right. I didn't... Being able to... 
okay. do most of it with Solar Flame. Uh, and then, yeah, you would just use Ravens and Battle Cruises on P2, probably. Better. Uh, a, B, A, B. One of those two. Not sure. I didn't have Hot and Horn in A, so I didn't have Hot and Horn S either. I had him in B. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anyone in any in in B. Everyone's S or A. Oh, Han Horner was B. Yes, but Han and Horner. I They're mean, they kind of deserve it, but also, wow. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> is it A or B? B. B. Are you okay with B? I, I, yeah. All right, let's put it in B. <laughs> Sorry, Han I was Horner. indecisive between A and B. So if people Carax. say B, then why would I say A? Carax, what do we have him? Uh. Boy, short sighted sucks. Um, I mean, you can use mirages to snipe thrashers. I think I probably would do that. Your top bar, Solar Lance, is still pretty good for purging waves in the darkness. When if you have like a couple cannons for them to crash onto, and then you just fire the Solar Lance at them when they hit your cannons, and then just mass mirages and snipe the thrashers. I think that should work good. And you could even, like, have the Mirages fly into Snipe the Thrashers, and the Mirages are like, yes, we're totally doing the damage, as P3 Spirit Redune just drops waves of orbital strikes on the Thrasher. Yes, the Mirages! All right. Totally the damage here. Let um, he should f be fine in A, I think. How about you, Tutu? Yeah, I think um, the Repair Beam is really key here, because, like, you get hit, but you get healed for you get healed pretty much right away so you don't feel the, the you don't suffer the losses i used uh immortal zealot and uh sentry or energizer and it was also fine i put him in a okay i didn't have karax and so therefore he's a so let's put him in a <laughs> karax's army is very tanky this is a fact we use the second prestige right i use the second prestige I wouldn't because I would want to have cannons for the attack waves to crash onto, but that's just me. All right, that's fine. You can use either the third one or the second one. It's fine. Even though prestige will work fine. Kerrigan, what do we yeah. have? Up? Kerrigan has Omega Worms, and she has a delete button. So uh, I think I did hero only. I, I wasn't. Uh, but did but you yeah, I put her in it. <laughs> uh, I have not yet. <laughs> How about you, Six Bender? I did do here only, yes. Kerrigan probably could do this no mining, honestly speaking. Uh, yeah, if you do use P2, which continues to be my preferred style of Kerrigan forever and always, uh, your, the Zappy Zap can go into the darkness without being able to see the enemies. So you could just like literally have Kerrigan like hitting a structure or something on the edge of the enemy base or even hitting your own Omega Worm, and then she just jumps in place with the Q and everything gets fried, and then you just keep attacking, and then jump in place, and everything near you gets fried, and then... It's pretty nice. <laughs> so, yeah, nice. you can do that without even needing to see the enemies, you just, again, just like Alarak, you, a whole bunch of lightning bolts go into the darkness, and then you hear the sound of death coming ah! from the darkness, they're all dead. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Kerrigan is an easy S tier, very good. Alright, I didn't have Kerrigan in A, so therefore he's S. Let's put Kerrigan in S. Second prestige, or third you're, prestige? You're just rubbing it in Han Horror's face, aren't you? <laughs> I'm not. I'm. 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 I'm kind of highlighting how much. How much they need a buff. That's. <laughs> I'm doing. I'm face. doing it out of love, not. A, not out okay, of spite. I see. Nova, where do we have him? Nova gets to wish she had one v one liberator uh, logic instead of co op liberator logic. Uh, because fun fact, liberators in one v one they changed it so they no longer get increased vision radius when they siege up to match uh, with how far they can fire. Instead, they just get a spotlight in the in the area where they can fire. That's and beautiful. Man, wouldn't that be useful here? That's beautiful. That would be so useful here. Unfortunately, Nova doesn't get that. So. <laughs> Um, with that complete sidetrack out of the way, Nova really doesn't like short sighted. Technically, her Marines can see a little farther with short sighted. Eh. You just go P3 and just delete everything, use a sabotage drone or something. Yeah, probably that's the way to go. Use P3 and then make a bio ball because the Marines have eyeballs, sort of. Sort of. Uh, yeah, P3 is pretty good. Maybe she's S, but I think she's only A. All right. How about you, Tutu? I put. I uh, I did just Nova hero only. Um, even against the the objectives, I only use Nova and airstrikes. <laughs> uh, I don't think she had enough DPS for that. No, you just pew 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 pew, and then they they takes a while, but takes yeah, a while. And, 
the last one, she kept getting one shotted by the dominator, but then I just bring her back, and then she gets shot again, and then bring her back. <laughs> you can uh, you can use the but, defensive drone manually. Oh wait, you did. Yeah, you did. No, nothing else. Okay, fine. Uh, no, no, he he had airstrike, so he wasn't no mining. Oh, okay. It was here only. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't no mining. Uh, yeah, you can drop. I don't think here. I don't think Nova can do no mining. That said, no. okay, I guess if her hero unit has that much DPS for Thrashers, never mind. I take it back. P3 Nova can solo this thing easy. P right. like like P3. I was thinking P3. You just nuke an entire area and you just drop liberators and finish them off. Right. That's, it. That's what I was like, saying. Like if you okay. have units, it'd be super easy. Okay. Yeah. All right. I then have but... Nova and A, so I have an S. There we go. Yeah, that's S. Rainer, where do we have him? Um. Rainer, uh, he hates we move unseen, but against short sighted, it's good to have scans. But the fact that you have to keep paying to see sucks. So see. Ooh, how about you, six bender? Literally pay to win, commander. Rawr! Um, honestly, I do not think he's that bad. Nearly that bad. I don't think uh, he's that because, bad either. Yeah, the mission is not like even though it's a fast mission, the early game isn't that fast your top bar can solo for the first like you can solo the first eight minutes with just top bar as a result you have time to just mass command center yes and they use p1 so, so <laughs> and then once you have the command centers going he's going to be like it's like once you have the command center set up he's better than pretty much every army commander so it's just a matter of surviving that early game and the early game it, there's not that much to survive so i feel like he could be a honestly hmm, that's different so but i'd be willing to compromise on it a compromise to b are you okay with b to two um sure all right i yeah. didn't have him in a i didn't have an s either I B. <laughs> so on an order as someone else in my <laughs> b tier so let's put the raider in b oh b be not there. Stead boy, where do we have him? <sighs> Zergling Chonky does not care about anything. A move Zergling and win. And oh yeah, Egorbs, you can shoot them into the darkness. And welcome back to shooting into the darkness and hearing the sound of units dying. <laughs> yeah, yes. How would you do too? The hero unit has a lot of HP and is a detector. So yeah, <laughs> S. Oh yeah. Wow. I didn't have an A, so I had an S. There we go. Put an S. Stukov, where do we have him? You just, even if you use overseers, it's still fine. Although you can just make queens. Uh, yeah, yes. but S. You just push bunkers. All right. How about you, Stick Vendor? Use queens because queens give units plus five vision radius, which is a flat plus five, which means they're short sighted. Good news, everyone. Our marines can see as far as they can shoot again. Hooray. Letter. Yeah, S. All right. I actually had an A, so but you can both yeah, but you guys both had an S, so put an S. Oh yeah, queens are good. Swan, where do we have them? Swan. Um, let's see. So basically, wraiths are in fact really good at sniping thrashers. Uh, if you're not doing sniping thrashers, you're probably going to have a bad day. <laughs> uh, build turrets at home, snipe thrashers with wraiths. It works great. Uh, but you also kind of have to know how to do it. So B. All right. How about you, Tutu? So you snipe thrashers even without vessels to like kill the AOE units around or something? Uh, yeah, yeah. Honestly, like the thing with the wraiths is that if you have a big enough ball of wraiths, especially with the cloak giving them the extra move speed and evade, they're so fast and high damage. You fly in, it's two or three volleys. Oh, look, thrasher's gone. Yeah. Like literally, you, you fly in, fire well, once. In the late start game. Start turning around, fire once. Fire one more volley as you're leaving, and Thrasher's gone. In the late game, I guess it looks like that. I guess also you can just um, you can just uh, use your call downs from the top bar. Also, watch out for vipers. There. Watch out for vipers. Yes, yeah, so you can use you can use yeah. top bar to you also can use top bar to thin out the defenses, and you should. Uh, yes, and watch out for vipers. If there's vipers, you'll have to actually you know split. It, you'll have to get good at splitting off the wraith that has the parasitic bomb on it. Which like it, this is why he's B. He's B not because he can't do it but because it's a method that requires a little bit of baseline micro and macro abilities to make it work. But if you have the baseline micro and macro to make it work, it's super straightforward and very effective. Uh, I recommend just looking for the the seven vipers. Wait, seven? No, there nine. are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten nine. vipers. Oh, ten. Okay, so look for the ten yeah, vipers, vipers, destroy them. And then so, you can fly in. You can check. I have. I made, the guy, I made a guy just for this. 
for Swan, where you can look on certain places on the ground and you can kill the vipers just by pointing your mouse on the certain spot. So even without vision, you can kill all 10 vipers. <laughs> nice. Using concentrated Definitely beam don't use B1 here. Concentrated beam is extremely strong here. All right. Uh, uh, I put so him in B, though. B, yeah. okay. I had him in A. But you guys had him in B, so let's put him in B. Tychus, where do we have him? Um, he gets a fixer instead of Sirius. Although Sirius also works if you want. Um, but I would I prefer a fixer like Nux or Vega to steal stuff. And it's like constant detection. Uh, and yeah, uh, play normally pretty much. So S. All right. How about you, Six Bender? Oh, I thought Tychus would really hate short sighted. Honestly, and also, yeah, like uh, getting a fixer first is, eh. I don't know. I would, I would think that Tykes is only A. I don't think he's makes S to be honest, personally. All right. So Sticks better is not convinced. So that will put him down in A. I did have, I, I did have an S though. <laughs> first, I had an S. Uh, is there, are, are you going to make another case for like S? Two, two. Problem. Mm, I can, well, if you get Nikara first, like he, he, he gets healed. He does get healed. Nikara does also like to just walk in front of him and die. That's true. This I put Nikara on a hot, separate key so I can pull her back. I like how I like how Nikara, Nikara's AI is genuinely so dumb that we can all just universally agree that Nikara's AI is a problem. Big Red Button's also pretty good for Tychus here. Just clearing out everything in the third and fourth set if you want to do it that yeah. way. Well, like Tychus isn't Bad. I, I think yeah, he's I like high A. I just don't think like, he's S. A is not a bad rank at all. It's not. It's not bad at all. It's, just, it's really good. It's not you know S. But yeah, if if it's not unanimous, it's not S. So despite me too to having him in S, C he's gonna be an A. Voila Zoon, where do we have him? I can't see. Wow, how ironic. I'm good at invisible stuff, but I can't see. Uh, of course, despite the fact that she can't see, time stop sniping void thrashers still exist. Still so, exists. Uh, Still probably A because literally just time stop and win. Okay. You have time stop for every Void Thrasher wave. You use time stop, you snipe the Thrashers, you, you rinse win. repeat. The only time you actually have to fight stuff is when waves come to your base. And then you have cannons. welcome back to stuff crashes on cannons. Woo! All right. How about you, Tutu? Uh, yeah, same. So you don't need oracles. <laughs> All right, let's put him in A. I, I didn't have an S, so I had him in A. Let's put him in A. Zagara, where do we have him? Um... <sighs> I feel like the the Scourge flying in is not... It's like her best strat, but at the same time, if, you, if you're not careful, you're going to get stormed and you're going to lose a lot of stuff. You're going to get pressed like a bomb. So, yeah. And you get stormed or hit by AO, various forms of AoE. Um, and if you go from the front door, you kind of just run in. <laughs> So maybe you just go from the front door, not the back door. Why not do the I bio launcher thing? <laughs> You can side. also do the bio launcher thing. You don't have to, but you you can. Uh, I put her in B. Okay. But I don't. Yeah, I think if front door is really good, I think A is also fine. What do you think, Expander? Yeah, kind of the same thing. Of like, I kind of think she's B, but also all her stuff is melee. So if you just slam through the front door, you might just be fine. There is the problem though of detection when slamming through the front door and keeping detection alive, making sure that your units don't outrun your detection and end up all dying. And there's also just the fact that like you kind of have to manually acquire targets because if you just a move, then anything that's out of vision, your units aren't going to aggro on it. So they're not going to, you know, pay attention to the fact that there's just like a Colossus there slicing at your Banelings or something and all your units are ignoring it. Or I'm not sure Colossus will have that problem because Colossus is technically an air unit, so it'll reveal itself when it hits you. But like, you know, a tank or a high Templar storming you or whatever, your units are just going to not go after it because it's out of vision. Yeah. So, yeah, I think she's B. All right. Uh, hmm. Okay, both of you had him in B. I had him in A, but both of you had him in B, so let's put him in B. Zeratul, where do we have him? He doesn't need to mine, so... You know, yes. How about you, Tutu? It, it, cannons are also good that for those good. who do yeah. mine. He doesn't need to mine. All right, S. He just spins. All right, he's, he just spins and he just wins. Nice. All right, that's a six commanders, each of these. Nice, beautiful. Yay, we did it. That's beautiful. Now, we have the perfect rectangle again. Do we have... I love when we get the perfect do rectangle. Do we have someone in S or in double S? If we did, it would be multiple people, so no. Oh, 
Okay. Who's top of S? Thanks. Yeah, I think um, so too. Oh, I thought I thought it was a toss up between Zeratul and Kerrigan for top of S, but Arcturus I guess you could also argue Manx. Her split are just so good. You can stop attack waves before they even hit, and you don't even need detection after like a certain point. Yeah, yeah. You do kind of have to know attack wave patterns. Basically, the biggest reason I'd put Kerrigan at the very top is because you don't even need to know attack wave patterns or anything. That's you true. could just Globalization wait wave. until the attack wave gets to your base and then just say, oh no, anyways, worm, I'm here. Kill the attack wave. Go back to what I was doing. All right. Uh, who's second in S? Paragon? I guess we could say Manx because both Zeratul and Nova, it would be slightly less convenient to just hop back and deal with the wave, so they also kind of want map knowledge. And Manx only kind of needs map knowledge because you can just check everywhere with the ESOs whenever it says attack wave spawns. So I think Manx could be next. Oh, wait. I thought we were saying Arcturus top of S. No, we were saying Kerrigan top of S. Oh, we were saying Kerrigan top of S? I'm saying Manx top of S. I, yeah, I'm also saying Arcturus say top Kerrigan. of S. I would say it's Kerrigan specifically just because she can just use the worm to not need any wave knowledge. You technically also you don't need game knowledge. You just point at ESO. <laughs> it's like well, you, you point at, you know, wave knowledge, as in where are the waves, right? You you have to actually look with the ESO, whereas with Kerrigan, it's but, like you wait. But you like... don't have to look because you can let them walk to your bunkers. You 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 have something, right? Uh, like. Yeah, I guess. Turks. Well, I mean, the thing is with remember with Arcturus on this mission. The, there is kind of time pressure to get all the ESOs down. Otherwise, you can literally just literally run out of time before they can kill the Thrashers because the time limit to kill the Thrashers actually isn't that long. It's just that it's not that hard to just max out on ESOs. But if you're trying to set up bunker lines for all the different approaches the attack waves come from and set up ESOs... You can just have... Now you can the do, time is actually going to well, feel tight. If you don't like making bunkers, you can just do it inhumanely, you know? Yeah, but then the, some, the, the, then you'll, you know, get messed up by, like, I set up all my defenses in the middle, and then you get hit by the attack rate that goes for your expansion. It's like, oh, I don't have an economy anymore. Just drop a bunker, then convert them to workers. I mean, losing your base is, is pretty bad, though. Um, like, We're losing building. your entire base would be bad. You can uh, I would say, I, I, I feel like Manx definitely is going to want to actually ESO the waves before they hit your base. You do not want to just have bunkers literally everywhere. So if you're going to run on bunkers, that means you kind of have to just know the attack wave pattern. So I would recommend just checking where the attack wave is with ESOs, shooting it apart with ESOs, and sending some troopers if needed to mop up what gets through. Uh, what do you think, Tutu? But that said, it, it, I, 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 top I, of S? I really think Kerrigan is the top of S. I would argue that Manx actually can run into problems if you try to, you know, make him... I feel like Kerrigan actually has to, like, do the mission. Whereas I... Manx, you just kind of sit back and the mission does itself. Kerrigan actually has a, Kerrigan actually has to micro, Manx actually has to macro, I guess you could say. And the reality is Manx still, like, you still have to, you know, actually aim your ESOs and... Let's be honest, is using Kerrigan that much harder than aiming your ESOs? Uh, it depends on what games you play. If for some people that know. I guess it's true. There's uh, an argument for both of them. Like Kerrigan barely has to Kerrigan barely has to do anything other than just micro a hero unit, which for people who are used to games where you just have one character anyways. I guess we can call it a tie. We can call it a tie and just use whoever you prefer. If you, yeah. if you if you're a free to play if you're a free to play player play Kerrigan. If you like Earth Splitters and you don't want to think about it, you don't want to think about anything, so we go on autopilot go Arcturus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, who's next? Who's third? After that, third place is probably Zeratul. Zeratul? <laughs> Maybe Nova. Uh, Nova, Zeratul, one of those two. They're Zeratul's both very close. Zeratul's better. Zeratul's probably better. Cadence. Yeah. Cadence good. Plus you have the demote Cadence dude and Telbrus Legion or melee. Uh, who's next? Stukov. Stukov? Stukov. Good though Stepman is, Stukov is so easy. You just make bunkers and you exist. All right. Then that boy? Stepman, then Nova. Then Nova? Okay. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I thought we had I thought we had Nova above uh, next to Zeratul. Sorry. I, I thought it was Zeratul, Nova, then Stukov, Stepman. Apparently I was I wrong. Think Stu I would think Stepman is higher than Nova, at least. Really? Higher than P3 Nova? Zerglings are melee units. Gary's the If you're P3 Nova, then you have to... Dealing with your attack waves at home. Like, if you don't I have guess a shot, that, there is that. Okay, I can see Stepman above Nova, sure. All right. Who's top of A? Tychus? Tychus. 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 And then. Probably 
Phoenix and Dahaka. Maybe the other way around. Phoenix and Dahaka are the next two. Uh, just not sure which order. All right, Phoenix and Dahaka. After that, then Alarak. Then Alarak. Hmm. Then Borazun and Karax. Borazun and Karax. Okay, are we okay with this? Okay. Who's top of B? Well, I would definitely say Rainer personally, but Rainer. Definitely not Rainer. <laughs> definitely not Rainer. Exactly. Oh my goodness. That's the problem. I would I would absolutely say it's Rainer personally. You have to scan. But so then much. I would say Artanis next. Yeah, you so. don't have any mobile that's actually Rainer. You have to scan every time you, you do anything. You right don't, here. but you don't, but get this. Once you have a bunch of orbitals, which you have by like the time the second thrashers spawn, which is when the mission actually demands you to do anything at all, basically, you just turn off all the mutators for both you and your ally. Would you have an army by then though? Yeah. Should. Like you just get to spend until like you get to spend until the second set of thrashers spawn just macroing and let the top bar deal with everything. You do want to get an early engineering base so you can build a missile turret so that you can detect the wave when it shows up. There is that. But other than that, your top bar just handles the entire early game. There's, the, there's also the issue of people who, like, mule too much and then you don't have scans. Use P1. Yeah. Just use P1. Come on. <laughs> no. No, no, no. You, 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 want, you want to not use P1 because you want the mules to help you get more orbitals faster early on. Do you know how poor P1 is for the first 10 minutes of the game? Uh, Double health, yeah. everything though. Uh, yeah, but like the health, eh, ugh, all yeah. that matters is how fast you macro. Hmm. Actually, one thing I'm considering here is how resilient are these guys to vipers? Because I feel like vipers are the most Jimmy annoying thing. Jimmy definitely doesn't care. Doesn't care? His bio can get the sibling class, especially when they're going up the ramp. Yeah, but uh, his bio could just kind of stim and walk through the saving cloud, worst case scenario. And once you have enough orbitals to have all those scans, you also have enough mules. Like This is like getting enough orbitals after you mule. And as long as you aren't like going, all right, step one, drop all my mules. Step two, immediately charge in. If you do anything other than that, you'll be fine because like you're going to be getting energy constantly, right? So you'd have to mule like instantly before attacking if you wanted to be short on scan energy. And you'd have to use all your energy on mules like instantly before attacking. It would kind of have to be almost deliberate feeling to run out of scan energy with muling. Um, and then just the fact that you can see the Vipers, you don't have short-sighted. For most people, the Vipers are a problem because they put a blinding cloud on you, but you're also actually blind, so you don't know which way you can go to be safe. You don't, like, know how to, like, split out of blinding clouds or micro out of them or anything. Like, it's just, like, it's just darkness. For Raynor, he just sees the whole battlefield as normal. So fighting those Vipers is literally as normal. Once you have your orbital set up, it's literally no mutation. Mm, ironically, I think Artanis might be at least as good as that. I mean, I, I'd, I'd say Raynor and Artanis are the top two of B. There's that. <laughs> what do you think, Tutu? Are okay with Raynor? Raynor seems like in the beginning, you have to know your cooldown usage timings. You kind of just use the cooldown when the attack wave hits you in the face. But there are different timings because there's pattern A and B. So I mean, you, you can, worst case scenario, what you can literally do is you just put your barracks at the ramp. You know the attack wave is coming up the middle ramp. When something starts shooting your barracks, you drop top bar on it. Hmm. Or, you know, you have to rush an engineering bay to get a missile turret out anyways. You put the, miss the engineering bay literally at the top of the ramp and then the missile turret behind the engineering bay. As soon as something starts hitting your engineering bay, you drop a top bar. Look at these other guys. I don't know. I just don't, I just don't like how Rainer has to scan to do anything. He has the whole game. Just but he literally constantly... gets to turn the mutation off. Uh, that, yes, he has to scan. But you get to turn the mutation off. Let's see. Like Abathur might be better. I, uh, I yeah. would say Abathur after isn't too the, After the early game? At all, after the honest. early game? What, what, what problems does Abathur really have once you have Leviathans? Eh. What problems Abathur I mean, really have once you have Leviathans? Hybrid Dominators blasting you in the face while Vikings tear you apart. There's a lot of Vikings if you're against Terran. I mean, just peel them off a few at a time. But you can't see. So, so wait, we can't have a Raynor who uses Top Bar in reaction to the stimulus of seeing his engineering bay getting shot at. But we can well, have I'm not saying we can't. I'm not saying we can't. I'm not saying we can't. Of the to peel off Vikings that he can't even see. Yeah, hey, I'm not. I'm not saying he. I'm not saying he can. I'm just saying. Abathur feels stronger on this mutation. No, no. I'd put definitely would put Cigar above Abathur. I would definitely put Rainer above Abathur, and I would definitely put Artanis above Abathur. I'm. Would I put Abathur at the bottom? I think I'd put Abathur at the bottom, honestly. Oh. Maybe Han Horner or lower. Really? Mm. Yeah, probably Han Horner or lower. Abathur's units are quite strong, but Abathur's down there. He's down there. 
On what basis? On the basis of short-sighted really sucks for keeping your ultimate evolutions alive, and he, more importantly, makes it super, super painful to farm biomass in the early game with short-sighted plus we move unseen. Just use your eyes. Just look at the blurs. Use your eyes. You can't... The enemies are in the darkness and invisible, so you have to... You, you have to see the shimmer over your toxic nests when you have short sighted, so you don't even like really see all the units you're pulling. You don't even know if you really pulled them all until like, There's oh, like a... one zergling walked over my toxic nest, so I only got two yeah, biomass. This map is also really dark. <laughs> this map is also really dark, the tile set. Yeah. I think Avatar is the worst. All right. So farming is a huge pain in the butt. All right, so who's top actually attacking who, who's, the bases of short side is a huge Who's top of V? Who's top of V? And detection is a pain. <laughs> who's top you of, actually have to keep overseers alive. Who's top of V? I'm 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 sticking with Rainer. saying it's Rainer, but I'm right. okay putting our tan at, at, at the top instead. Okay. Uh who do you think to two is top of V? If you agree I can with kind Rainer. of see Rainer just because like when I when I did this, I had like two battle cruisers at ten minutes. <laughs> And I finished the you second battle set. cruisers. Oh, that's not what I expected, but I guess I okay. Fair and enough. I had set. I had five orbitals, making two more. All right, all right. Let's put Rainer top of B, and then our and then our tennis. Our tennis yeah. gets free Thrasher kills every yeah. five minutes. All right. Yes. And then who's? But not only that, like shield overcharge. If you do have shield, technically you can have shield overcharge for literally every little thing if you're using P3. But even if we assume you don't, having shield overcharge just for pushing into the bases. Yeah. It's not hard. You just ram into things with a million shields, so you'll be okay. All right, who's third? Zagara. Zagara? Zagara. And then... I'd put Swan next. Swan. Yeah, Swan. The Abathur, the Han and Horner? Or Han and Horner and Abathur? I would put Han and Horner above Abathur, honestly. All right, there we go. So that's I, our... What? Okay. I think Ab, uh, Abathur is better than Han and Horner, so... I can Hunter see Hunter that. Like, Han and Horner and Abathur are, like, vying for the bottom position with each other. They're competing for bottom position here. I did not have uh, Han and Horner at the bottom of my ranking, so uh, I'm not probably in Han and Horner space. There we go. <laughs> anyway, uh, guys, watch 226 Better channels. I will link them down below. And I will see you guys next time.